talking to you from my kitchen today and I am a clay artist and also a teacher at Ultima Clay Works. I am interested in demonstrating my process for surface design with underglazes on lighter hard pots today. And so first I'd like to show you some uh, pots that are my inspiration. So this is Jason Burnett, Chandra Debus, Ron Myers, Travis Winters, and Sue Terrell. They all have surface design techniques and they're all different from the technique that I use. Surface design adds energy to a pot. Here is a lovely two brush on glazes which is really nice for a teacup, but I find that surface design has an energy that I enjoy. It's a narrative and also a visual language. Here's an early pot. When I was in uh, Arizona, I was inspired by those long-eared jackrabbits. This is a bird from my garden, if you believe that one. I have another big bird to show you. Here's another bird, not from my garden, but there's lots of energy. The narration is about a fox hiding, because that fox also wants to get a hold of that bird. Flowers from my garden. These really are flowers from my garden. This was an early bird. You won't find him in my garden at all. But for me, there's lots of energy. You can almost see him running. Again, a narrative. Why are you so hard-headed? There happens to be somebody in my family who inspired me with this surface design. There are cardinals in my yard. These two are having a conversation. And the blue jays are always having a conversation in my yard. Inspiration really is all around. This is a lily from my front garden, and this butterfly found its way onto one of my pots, which happens to be in somebody's kitchen right now. And these are sunflowers, which are in my yard. B. And I was fortunate enough to take a screen, silk screen, a class with Shauna Pegas, and so occasionally the silkscreen B winds up on my pieces. So now I'm ready to show you the tools that you'll need. We talked a lot about inspiration and what inspires me, and so one of the things I do is just look for photos of animals that are interesting to me. This happens to be a beautiful Indian golden oriole, and not only uh, sometimes I will uh, take a look at it directly from a computer and, and then there's my inspiration right there and other times I will print it out. Oops! And so this time what I've done is print it out this Indian Golden Oriole. So uh, while I'm thinking about uh, what animals I want to um, use in my design, I'm also going to take a look at my leather hard pots. These pots are leather hard. They are. They. This is after the handle has been put on the cup, and my fingerprint will no longer um, make a mark. So it's a perfect time to draw, paint, and of these four cups. I've decided that this Indian Golden Oriole 
will be painted on this cup. And the reason that I use leather hard cups is so that there is some moisture in the clay so that the underglaze has something to stick to. You don't want it to peel off. So now that I've got my cup ready, I'm going to take a look at my colors. And um, this bird is black, uh, but I rarely use black on the bird. So I'm going to use purples and blues. Here's a turquoise if I want to make something lighter. Here are some greens for the leaves. The leaves. Here's a nice yellow. And, um, and then here's another yellow. And then here are some good colors with this temple gray for um, the branch that it's sitting on. And these are all available. Um, Duncan cover coat and also um, velvet underglazes by Amico are all available at um, Playwork Supplies. Um, these are just coffee stirrers that I use to stir up my underglazes. These are all Sumi brushes, which are really, really nice because once you wet it, you get a really nice point. And I'm always putting my brushes in water because I almost put um, a watercolor um, surface down on my pots. These are really tiny um, brushes and um, this is Low Cornell and you can get these at Michael's or at um, Joanne Fabric with little teeny tiny um, brush heads. It was Jenny Mendez who introduced me to this kind of brush. And then I use a really soft pencil because I might decide that I want to um, sketch um, something on the cup. So here's my inspiration. And the other thing that I might do is take a look at this bird and decide um, this movement. So I want the bird to come around like this. This is where his head is going to be, or her head, probably his head. He's a nice beak. And I go for exaggeration. I find that exaggeration works for me. When I used to paint on large canvases, really large canvases, five foot by six foot, um, I, was, I used to use um, colors, swaths of color. And so I find that I'm doing the same thing with clay and underglazes today. Get smaller. I will probably exaggerate this. Here's his branch. And leaves. A nice big eye. Alright. So what I'm going to do now is use this nice soft piece of foam. I'm going to start with yellow. And here is his head. This beautiful chest. is an impressionist.
auch Deutsch drin. this wet brush Just background color. And you can see how watercolory the underglaze paint is looking. bigger plate or a picture, this tail would come all the way down here. You can see how I'm layering, and it really is watercolor layering. Let's 
So now I've finished the painting. As you can see, he's got multiple layers. Uh, he's got a leaf. He's sitting on a branch, and there are some more leaves. And in a minute, I'm going to uh, put a wax coating on this cup. But I want to show you how the wax resist works. On the bottom, I have already um, waxed this bottom, and it's dry. So I'm going to write my name. which will go over the wax and into the Scofito name. So I've scratched in my name for the wax resist. And you should stop that. And so all I'm gonna do is blot the black underglaze. It's sitting on top the wax resist. And so I'm going to do something similar now on the cup. I will use, let me dry my hand. Wax resist. Well, it's been about 10, 15 minutes. The wax resist is dry. I've done some scraffito on the cup, and I wanted to show you what a finished piece looks like. This jackrabbit from Arizona has been scraffitoed, and then I lay black amico underglaze into those scraffito lines. But I also wanted to show you what happens with the watercolor uh, application of uh, underglaze that I do so that this pink or lilac over this chartreuse uh, does not blend but rather stands out and the same thing will happen um, with our bird here if you look very closely here you can see um, this is flame orange and real orange and while one overlaps the other it doesn't uh, become a third mixed color but one is more apparent than the other and so that's the look that I'm going for and these lines of course were also scraffito. So now let's go back to this little bird, the leaves and the branch have been scraffitoed and I have just a little bit more of this sort of crown of feathering and I don't want to put too much pressure the cut does not have to be the cut does not have to be too very deep so I'm going to put the incising knife down pick up this nice square edge brush and I will start I like to brush back and forth because that way, for sure, the black underglaze gets into the lines. This cup will be bisque next. And uh, a lot of the, the black underglaze that I leave on top of the wax um, will actually come out after the bisque firing 
and sometimes I will brush some of that off and sometimes I'll leave it on. It just adds an extra dimension as far as I'm concerned. So you can see how I brush across the line. Sometimes I find that I need a line somewhere and I'll just go back in with the incising knife and make another line. So I'm going to cross the cut The extra that is outside of the lines can also be wiped off if you want a really clean look. Oops. That happened because I missed waxing. I can even go in, however, with a wet sponge and just touch that spot up. But I'll probably leave it. You know, it's a handmade cup. A handmade design. Sometimes you have little glitches. And you can see where the wax just stops, the light is glaring on it, and I don't want my underglaze to go beyond the wax resist. I'll take a look. Here's a little line that I missed. I missed some spots there. where I didn't, I missed a wax application. And so what I'll do just for fun, is put a little extra black here. And that will sit on top of the wax, and um, it will be there, like it is here, it will be there. And I left it there, or I could have wiped it off. Oops, I just say another one. Line here. So he is totally finished. You can see that there is a fantasy part of the Indian Golden Oriole. If you went to India and looked for this bird, you wouldn't find it if you looked for him to look like this. And after bisque, what I will do just as I did here after bisque. I'm going to apply that silk screen B. So I'll take the silk screen B and I will silk screen it onto this cup after bisque. And then I will put a clear glaze on it and bisque it for, uh, not bisque it, uh, fire it for its final firing. So there she is, or he is. So I'm going to end my demonstration with my inspiration palette. I see these cardinals all day long in my garden, and I hope you enjoyed your time with me.